Glory to the most high, man. It's a blessing to be back in Dallas, yo. You know what I'm saying, man? I want to thank um, Ebony and the team, man, with the, with the music, man, bringing us into his presence, yo. And, man, I want to thank y'all, man, for making it out here in this harsh weather, man. Ooh, I was driving and that rain was coming down, Miss Tara. I'm like, Lord, what you going to do, Daddy? But he able to show up. You know, like they say, that's, that's when the real people of God show up. When it's raining. <laughs> hey, man, I want to thank the family, man, coming from Lafayette, man, to get this word, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Glory to the most high. Mr. Dale, you're a blessing, man. Appreciate you, you and Ms. Dawn. We're going to get into this word, y'all. By the grace of the Most High. Yes, Lord. God is good, man. God is good, y'all. So we're going to get into this work, man. Coming out of the, the book of Joel, y'all, chapter 2. Verse 17 and 18, Father, we just thank you, God, for being in the midst of us, God. Being in the midst of the rain, Father, Lord, making a way out of nowhere, God. Oh, God, pulling back, Father, Lord, the heavens and shutting the rain, God, and allowing it to be clear for us, O King. God, we thank you for that. We don't take it for granted, God. But this is a work that you wanted to go for it, God. So we ask you, God, you started this. Now finish it, Daddy. Take our little, our little fish, God, in loaves and, and feed the multitude. Feed us, O King. Let it be you and not me. Let me decrease and you increase, Father Lord. We asking you to cover this service from top to bottom, from start to finish, God. We ask you to come against the enemy, God. We bind everything, Father Lord, that would hinder your word, God. Let your angels stand guard about around this place, God. Let us have church, God. You come down, God, and stand up in me, O King, like you did for Paul, God. For it's you alone, God. It's your words that we need, Father Lord. Oh, God, for you alone have the words of life. So bless us, Master, as we meet and break bread, God. For we know that we live not by bread alone, but by every word that perceives out of your mouth, God. So have your way, Daddy, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, y'all, I'm going to go ahead on and read the text, man, and we're going to get into it, man. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 17 through 18, y'all. The Bible said, let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach, that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Verse 18, then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. Lord, bless your word, Daddy. Oh, your precious word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And y'all, we said that this was going to be a series, y'all. We got a, a length of points, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to just give it to you quick, and we're going to get into a recap. And we're going to just pick up where we stop, y'all. And we're going to take our time in this message. I'm, I'm hoping that we get to point two, but I'm feeling like we're not. Because God want to finish this, this first point. You know what I'm saying? And um, the first point was... An understanding of the Lord, uh, I mean, an understanding of the day of the Lord. The second point was let the priest. The third point was weep between the porch and the altar. The fourth point was your people. The fifth point, your heritage. And then we're going to conclude with why and then, you know, why and then. You know what I'm saying? Just giving you a road map to where we going. Because I believe this series is going to bless us. Because it's going to bring us straight into prayer. Like Paul was talking about. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we want to establish in Dallas. Because we're going to see in the text, y'all, right before 
revival hit the land. Right before God break out all his promises and his blessings for his people, y'all. In these latter days, these future days that Joel is prophesying about, God makes a carry-on call, y'all, to the priests. <laughs> he said, let the priests, he called for the priests, y'all. He called for them to weep before the porch and the altar, y'all. That's all about prayer. All about prayer. All about mourning. All about standing in the gap for a people, y'all. You know what I'm saying? For God to move. And right after the priest stand up, right after the priest stand up, we see God just break out with all kind of blessings upon his people. Breaking out with restoration, breaking out with spiritual awakening, revival in the land. And it all started from the priests. Who? Them that minister in the house of the Lord. Because that's what a priest is. A priest first ministers to God in his house, making sure God have every single thing he need in his house. But then, Miss Terra, he also stands in the gap for the people. He makes sacrifice for the people, making sacrifice for himself, but also bringing unto the Lord a sacrifice for the people. And it's a sacrifice of prayer. It's a standing in the gap. It's a making intercession. You know? And we're going to go deep into it after we talk about the priest, after we talk about weeping at the altar. We're going to go into to, to First Timothy. Just going deep into prayer because it's different elements of prayer. It's different elements of prayer. And that's what Joel did, man. I call him the modern day prophet, the future day prophet. Because even theologians agree that everything Joel was prophesying, it would be for a future day. It would be for a day that who that had not came yet, yo. You know what I'm saying? Revival. Who this last awakening to his people, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So we talked about last time, man, we went into just looking at, you know what I'm saying, some background information that Joel himself wrote this book. You know what I'm saying? He wrote the book of Joel. You know what I'm saying? And John MacArthur attested that we see that in chapter 1, verse 1, y'all. And I'm going, not going to read it for the sake of time, but it shows. He said, he say, in the, in the, the, the burden of the Lord came unto me. You know what I'm saying? And man, not only that, Mac Arthur says that we attest that Joel wrote this book because jo, Joel writing style, y'all. It was the same as Edmos. It was the same as Hosea the prophet, y'all. And all kind of other historical facts, y'all. And they say he wrote it, y'all, in 835 B.C. through 796 B.C. And B.C. time counts down, y'all, during the reign of King Josiah and others even say during the reign of King Uzziah, who touched the altar when he wasn't supposed to, and the Lord smote him, y'all. And the Lord smote him. You know what I'm saying? That's Joel. And we just went in about the background of Joel. And I'm not going to bore you and go through it again, man. You know what I'm saying? This should put the message up. But we went in and we grabbed all kind of spiritual nuggets from it, y'all, of what God is doing in the church, Paul. The positions that he's raising up, the tools, the hands that he's raising up. And we talked about it in Romans. How as many members of the body, but yet one body. Many members, all bringing their giftings together, y'all, to do God's will in the earth, Shane. You remember that, Shane? And we went through that, man. We went through that. And then we kept on moving, y'all, and we got to our first point, y'all. Our first point, an understanding of the day of the Lord. An understanding of the day of the Lord. And this is deep, y'all, because the book of Joel, we said and we talked about, you know what I'm saying? It's all about what's called the day of the Lord. Every single chapter, Joel makes this mention of this phrase, 
the day of the Lord. Chapter 1, the day of the Lord. Chapter 2, the day of the Lord. Chapter 3, y'all, the day of the Lord. So God put on my heart to let's get an understanding of this day of the Lord. Before we go on to the priestly things, before we go on to revival and to all that God want to do, y'all, we got to understand what day we living in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot going on, Mr. Franklin, and a lot sleeping. A lot don't know that is the day of the Lord. Oh, God. We're going to get into it. Mom, you like to use that phrase, visitation. And I was just looking at that scripture. When Jesus talked about his, his people, his own people, he said, judgment going to fall upon you because you didn't even know the day of your visitation. Oh, God, you didn't know the day of your visitation. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to look at this day of the Lord. We're going to look at it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This thing bless us, yo. And we talked about it last time, and, and we're going to pick up where we started, but I'm going to just give you a little recap so you can understand this thing. You know what I'm saying? We said that this is a phrase that represents both the judgment and the justice of God simultaneously. Oh, God. It represents the judgment and the justice of God simultaneously, y'all. Meaning that the day of the Lord on one hand represents God's judgment in a sense of condemnation. But on the other hand, it represents God's justice, y'all, in a sense of justification, in a sense of being justified, of being made right in the eyes of the Lord, <laughs> of being in a position to be blessed by the Most High. Not by our own works, it's him, y'all. Who justify us. The scripture called him not only the judge, but also the justifier. Oh, God. That's some deep theology type stuff. And that's who he is. And that's the day of the Lord. We talked about it, y'all. That, that is known by theologians as, as what's called, y'all, in seminary, the nature of the day of the Lord. And this is going to be a teaching message, y'all. The preaching going to come in the next, in the next, the next point, y'all. This going to be a teaching message, but I believe you need to know what time it is. The scripture clearly tells uh, tell us that men can know the sky. They can know the times of the sky. They can look at it and see rain coming, Miss Dawn. They could judge all these different things. You got the forecast. You got all that. But they don't understand the signs of the time, Mr. Franklin. They don't understand the danger. They don't understand what's taking place in the earth. Oh, they think it's all kind of other things. With all the killing that's going on. With all the suicide that's going on. With all the marriages being on the rocks. We don't understand what's going on with all the people that's leaving the faith right now, y'all. We don't understand what's taking place. It's a day of the law. It's a day of the law. And, we, and I was going to say it later, but God going to want to give you an understanding so you could see what he's doing. For it not to break you, but make you. <laughs> Paulie, he don't want it to break you. He want it to make you. He wants you to see it for what it is. Look at it and see that it's him. Because it's going on even in our own lives. He said the things that's taking place in your life, don't think it's strange because it take it place in your brother in life as well. So don't look at it like, like God is just picking on you or letting things happen to you. Nah, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's doing what he always do. It's a part of the shaking. It's the day of the Lord. It's the day of the Lord, Paulie. And let's talk about this. In this day we living in, because we got some things coming down the pipeline that a lot of Christians are not ready for. They waiting to be raptured up. <laughs> when he said, them that endure to the end, going to be saved, Paulie. Ooh, they caught up in the, the pre-trip. Mm. And I ain't going to knock what they believe. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God, I'm going to leave that ready. You know what I'm saying? 
because I believe in a post trip. You know what I'm saying? But it's two different schools of thought. But if you're ready for a post trip, oh God, you ain't just thinking that you're gonna be yanked out of your Miss Chandra. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do like the scriptures say. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling before the Lord. That's not going on right now. <laughs> Even in the house of God, that's not going on right now, y'all. They're not, they not working out their own salvation with fear and, fear and trembling before the Lord. There's no fear, and we're going to talk about that because that's what's coming. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is coming. I'm going to say it again. The fear of the Lord is coming. I'm going to say it one more time, y'all. Oh, God, judgment begins in the house of God. I'm going to say it one more time. The fear of the Lord is coming. And you're going to see it in a way like you never saw it before. But we can't be scared. Jesus said, I tell you these things beforehand. That you might know. <laughs> that you might know that I am God, Paulie. Not to shake you. Not to break you. But to make you. But to make you. But to make you. And when you get that and understand that. In this nature of the day of the Lord, y'all, we talked about that it has two characterized references. That we're going to get into a little later. But then we kept going, y'all, and we talked about that this phrase, y'all, can also be seen as a day of visitation from the law. A day of visitation from the law. A day of visitation. Meaning that this is a day of an event, y'all, that's solely brought about by the Lord himself. <laughs> I have in my notes. This is a day of event, y'all, that's not brought about by creation. Though God may use creation in it. <laughs> we about to see some things with creation. Man, you think the weather cutting up now, Paulie? We about to see some things with the weather. We about to see some things with creatures. And you've been seeing it down the pipeline, talking about locusts about to hit America in a way like it never did before. I remember one of them times being by the, by, the, by the gas station and all you see was locusts all over the pumps, all over the, and we like, what? People getting scared. I don't think we ready for the day of the Lord, man. And I'm not even talking about an eschatological time. I'm not even talking about a final eschatological time that we're going to talk about where he's going to wrap everything up. Nah, the day of the Lord. <laughs> we're going to see that it's, that it's throughout the annals of time of man. It's consistent. It's constant. Who says when he created this thing, since the fall, y'all, God been had to come and visit. Ooh, he had to been, he, he had to come and pour our judgment. Pour our judgment, man. Pour our judgment. Hmm, God. But it's not an event that's brought about by creation. It's not even an event that's brought about by man, y'all. And man doing all kind of things right now. Playing with CERN. Trying to rip a hole in some things to, to let some things loose. Who Kim trails, spreading things in the, in the air. Pandemics, making artificial who viruses and things, y'all. Man is doing a lot right now. We living in the days, Jesus said, it would be like the days of Noah. Oh, God. In those days, he said, he said they did evil, mom, continually. Continually. Let's talk about this day of the Lord. It's not only not brought about by man, but it's not brought about by the angels. It's not brought about by the devil or his demonic forces, y'all. Though the Lord may use all these things within it. 
He's going to use all these things at his mechanism, at his tool to bring forth this day of the Lord. He's going to use all these different things, Paul, but it's not them. Mm. It's the Lord. <laughs> it's the Lord himself, and we talked about that. And I gave you some, 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 some examples, you know what I'm saying, of this day of visitation of the Lord. First off, we looked at Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 9, y'all. We looked at Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 9, which is a sort of this day of visitation of the Lord. We talked about it when the Most High began to speak to himself, y'all. When he began to talk to his Elohim. When he began to talk to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, y'all. <laughs> Three, but yet one. One divine essence, but three divine persons. All God. <laughs> All God, yo. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And as he, he, he had this meeting with himself, he said, let us come down and confound their language. In Genesis, when they was trying to build up a tower, y'all, to storm into heaven and fight against God. Being led by a, a wicked leader named Nimrod, who was led by Satan himself. <laughs> trying to storm up in heaven and fight God. God said, let us go down. Look what he said. He said, let us go down and visit them, y'all. Let us go down and visit them. Let us go down and confound their languages, yo. You know what I'm saying? Another visitation of the day of the Lord we talked about, yo. When the Lord himself had to go forth and visit both Sodom and Gomorrah. Both Sodom and Gomorrah. He had to go visit himself, Sodom and Gomorrah, yo. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 20 through 21. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to read it for you. It says, and the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see who he said, I'm going to go down. He said, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that that has come to me. And if not, I will know. The Lord visit, mom, Sodom and Gomorrah himself. He visit them. He visit them to see, <laughs> to see what was taking place, y'all. To see if he would have to pour out judgment. Mm. And then I gave you one more, and that's where we're going to dive in. That's where we stopped it. You know what I'm saying? I gave you one more. And this is where we're going to crank up at. You know what I'm saying? I told you that, that, that the day of the visitation of the Lord, I believe, and I kind of gave it to you early, is taking place right before our eyes. This day of visitation of the Lord, ain't grand? It's taking place right before our eyes. And I pointed you to a scripture in sucking Ezra. Sucking Ezra chapter 6. Verse 7 through 19, sucking Ezra's, sucking Ezra's, y'all. And some going to try to come against this book, but this book is a part of the Apocrypha. This book was wrote, was put in the 1611 King James Bible with all the other books. Oh, God. Now, you don't have to call it the canon. You could call it an extra biblical book. But if I'm going to take commentary from John MacArthur, if I'm going to take commentary from Matthew Henry, if I'm going to take con um, commentary from Tony Evans and all these other giants in the faith, yo, why I'm not going to take reference from Ezra, who, who was a priestly scribe in the Old Testament, who brought back the Bible, Kurt? Who they lost the Bible? They was doing so much wickedness. He was a man who loved God, Kurt. He was a priestly scribe. He find the Bible and brought this thing back to the temple. He was a scribe of the law. <laughs> and he opened the scriptures again. And he began to convict Israel again, begin to show them the laws again. 
He began to tell them, Mom, you're following idols. You're doing this, bending to statues. When God, who? God, that, God, God, God done commanded you some things. Ooh, he brought them back to the Bible, y'all. This Ezra, who got a book in the Bible called Ezra. And Bible's commentators say he even wrote probably the book of Nehemiah. They say he even wrote probably the Chronicles, y'all. And when you read Sucking Ezra, God tells him, he wrote about 70 books. Come on, come on, Brother Frank. Brother Frank will be on. He'll be texting me some things, y'all. He on this thing. He's studying to show himself approved. We got to be Bereans, y'all. Because everything we coming before you with, we're not coming from, from, from our own mind and our own thinking. Nah, we bringing you scripture, man. We bringing you the Bible. We bring in your history. We bring in your context. We bring in your every single thing from the most high. And it's not us. It's him that's doing this in the earth right now. That's him that's doing this in the earth right now. Because we're going to get in touch. He's dealing with an upper echelon. Oh, God. He's dealing with, with, us, with, a, with the heads of state right now. You can't see it. He's dealing with kingdoms right now. He's dealing with governments right now. He's dealing with nations right now. Right before your eyes and you can't even see it. He's here, y'all. Who? God in the name of Jesus. And that's what sucking Ezra's talk about. Let's look at this thing close. Sucking Ezra's chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. I'm going to read it, y'all. And this is God talking. This is Ezra just, just, just breaking this thing down. He said, and it happened that when I heard it, I stood upon my feet and hearkened. And behold, there was a voice that spake. And the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. There's nobody but the Lord, y'all. Nobody but the Lord. It was a sound of many waters. Verse 18, and it said, behold, the days come that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. <laughs> he telling it to you himself. God said, I'm going to draw nigh in the days to come, in these future days, in these last days, Paulie. He said, I'm going to draw nigh. And what he going to do? He said, and I'm going to visit them. That dwell on the earth, mom. He going to visit them. He said, I'm not going to send an angel. I'm not going to send the devil. I'm not going to send my servants. I'm not. Nah, I'm going to come myself. Ooh, ooh. Can you feel your master near? Can you feel the one that bought you? Who with his own blood? Can you feel him? In these days, in these times, with all these things going on, Nick, can you feel him, Nick? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. He's in a time, oh, we're going to get in touch, of bringing judgment, but also restoration, also justification, also justice. And we're going to get into that and show you what that look like. What that look like. Is blessings on one hand, Kurt, and judgment on the other. Who God is like him saying, one gonna be sleeping in the bed and the other one, and one gonna be taken and the other one gonna be left. One gonna be grinding, ain't Randy. Blessings falling on one person and judgment on the other person right on the side of them. Have you ever seen that before? Who God. Have you ever seen that before? The day of the Lord. The day of visitation. And what you going to do when you draw nigh? Verse 19. And we'll begin to make inquisition of them. That word inquisition, y'all, it means a prolonging investigation. A prolonging investigate, investigating things. We heard of that word inquisition. The Spanish inquisition. When they was, they, 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 they was bringing all kind of, they was cutting up, destroying things. 
We, we heard about the, the inquisition of the Catholic Church with them crosses, making people take their feet, investigating their belief, Miss Chandler. And if you don't be a Catholic, we're going to kill you. <laughs> oh, God. That's not how God operates. That's not how God act. That's not of God. He says, the violent mom that take it by force. We're going to get in touch when we get into the priest, the Lord, the, 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 ooh, the, the prince of this world, y'all. Who had took the cloak of the church. Took the cloak, took the cloak of Peter. Hmm, and put a stench on this priestly office. And that's why God got a call for the priests. <laughs> why you think the Gentiles, they ain't pick up this, this, this priestly office like they were supposed to, Paul, because they don't really understand the priestly office. They don't understand it. They New Testament believers. Ooh, they don't understand it. They, they couldn't go in the temple in these old days. They don't understand the priestly office. But another reason is... The devil had crept in, took the cloak of a, of a, ooh, God in the name of Jesus. Had me weeping one time, my shame, of what he did with the church. Revelation say that the dragon was wounded and he stumbled, but he caught himself. He caught himself unto the church, putting on the cloak of this wicked Catholic church, who everybody think is a part of the church. Because there was a church in Rome, Pergamos. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> but God began to call his people out, y'all, when this, this, this wicked, oh, this, 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 oh, God, y'all got me ahead of myself. When he strong on this thing. And they begin to kill the real Christians. They begin to kill the John Husses. They begin to kill the wild cliffs. They begin to kill the, the, the oh, God, all the real Christians, even whole villages, y'all. God had to raise up even Martin Luther to come out of there, man. Come out of there, my people, lest you partake in her judgment, man. Ooh, ooh. We're going to get into this thing. Inquisition, y'all, meaning a prolonging investigation in order to bring forth judgment, y'all. Judgment upon who I have in my notes. In the little being term, you know what I'm saying, within the, the book of, um, of Ezra, y'all, with the Apocrypha, it says what they be. But what that what they be mean, it means all them that have hurt unjustly with unrighteousness. They hurt unjustly with unrighteousness. And this, y'all, is the day of visitation of the Lord, of whom him pouring out judgment I have in my notes, y'all. He's pouring out judgment, oh, God, upon the upper echelon. Let's get into the upper echelon. The upper echelon, the upper echelon. I'm talking about the upper echelon of Esau, y'all. With their fake system of playing like Israel in the land. And we talked about that, that the masses, y'all. The masses, giving them kickback right now. They all jumping on the train with, with Palestine. Giving, giving, giving these, this, this fake system that they got going on, giving them kickback right now. They usually able to keep the masses quiet, yo. But they're giving them kickback. Those that they look at as sheeple, ain't right? They're giving them kickback. They're making noise. I told you, even, even, even pastors, Gentile pastors, European pastors getting up. And they preaching to their congregation. It's so many right now, Mr. Franklin. And they letting their people know that they are not the people of God. They are not the people of God. They letting their people know that. 
Now, they ain't telling them who is the people of God, but they letting them know that they are not the people of God. They sent them a billion dollars yearly. A billion, mom. And they still want more. And they own everything. They own everything. This fake system of playing like Israel in the land. And all of this is taking place right now. That's why that anti-Semitic is so hype right now. That's the only fight back they have, (laughs) y'all. And they could hurt you because they own everything. So they're putting the muzzle on the mouth of the truth tellers. You know what I'm saying? I have in my notes, and it's all because God is exposing their hand in the facts of who they really are. That's what God doing. That's what God done. Can I teach you some things that's happening right now? We ain't got to preach all the time. Can I teach you some things, man? And we're going to go deep into it. You know what I'm saying? You need to know what's going on. You need to know who he's judging right now. Look at it. And you're going to be able to see your God. You're going to see the hand of your God. You're going to see where he's at in the earth. He's judging the upper echelon, you know? But not only the upper echelon of Esau, but the upper echelon of Edom. Oh, God. And we're going to make the connection because these two pieces run everything. They run everything. We're going to get into it in Revelations. I don't know if I send you the scripture, man. But the two pieces. The two pieces in Revelation. That's the two pieces. One who came out of the land, who had horns like a lamb, but spoke like a dragon. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? The upper echelon of Edom, who've been running their wicked religious system, y'all. Because they're running not only the political game, they're running not only the military game. Pastor preached about that one time. They're running not only the military game, but they're running the religious game. And they're running the money game, Paul. (laughs) They got these three on earth, Kurt, on lock. But Kurt, God is ready to break the system. God is ready to bring down Babylon, Kurt. He got to shake some things to do it, Kurt. He raising up a people to do it, Kurt. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna take their rightful place in the church, yo. Because he's going to use the church to do it. It's the church that's going to bring down this Babylonian system, Paulie. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit move upon what? Holy men to write the scriptures, Miss Chandra. He going to use holy men. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. He going to use holy men. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. He said, holiness without in the book of Hebrews. No man going to be able to see God. How much you want to see God? Because it's going to all depends upon your holiness. And that holiness for us is not being perfect, but it's being blameless, Paulie. It's being blameless in the eye of the most high. You know what I'm saying? Having a heart to want to do right. The Bible say one believe unto righteousness and confess it unto salvation. You can't live right without believing right. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. People think they can believe what they want, Miss Tara. God has his own ideologies. He has his own doctrine. He has his own belief system. And if you on the other side, on the other side of it, you in error, man. You in error. And you can't live right in error. It don't mix. 
It don't mix. Now we got a lot of people, they, 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 they know the right things to say, but still living wrong. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, man, let's talk about this thing, man. That's going to make you dig and get in the scriptures, man. That's going to make you see something and look past just fake church. God ain't just called us to meet, man. God ain't just call us to go into church and walk on the red carpet, man. God ain't just call us to wear big skirts and, and all of that and big hats and look good. No, he want us to live this thing in the earth. He want us to be examples in the earth, y'all. He's ready to move some things. He's ready to make a change, Miss Dawn. We talked about it in the book of Joshua. God not playing in the earth. Time is getting short, man. And the devil knows it. That's why he's cutting up right now. God is tired of the playing church. He's dealing with the upper echelons. And we're going to get in touch, not only in the secular realm, but all the way from the secular to what's supposed to be sacred, Miss Chandra. And we're watching it. We're watching it. We're watching it. And sad to say, Many more going to fall. But will it shake you? Huh, Miss Terror? Or will it make you? Will it cause you to quit on your marriage? Will it cause you to quit walking like a Christian? Will it cause you to run out? Will it cause you to go and sin? What is going to do to you? Are you going to stand firm? The Bible say, when all you can't do anything, what he say? Stand therefore. Stand therefore. It's the times we live in. They're not going to be able to endure sound doctrine, Paulie. But, but, but Paul gave Timothy a, 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 a charge. He said, preach it in season and out of season. Preach it when they want it. And when they don't want it, we stay true to the text. We stay true to the Bible, man. I ain't up here giving you my own opinions. I ain't up here giving you what I think. Nah, what Bryce think is wrong. He said, let every man be a liar and let God be true, man. We bring forth the scriptures to you. The only thing that's able to save, oh, God. Your soul, man. It's enough for the playing church. Yo. You know what I'm saying? This wicked religious system from the Vatican of Rome. People scared to say that. But like Darby say, I said it. <laughs> like Darby say, I said it. From the Vatican of Rome who just came out, we talked about, they came out and acknowledged their hand in colonialism. And we talked about that, by them acknowledging their hand in colonialism, y'all, they automatically acknowledged their hand in the diaspora. <laughs> and we talked about that, and we about to get in it, man, you know what I'm saying? We talked about this diaspora, y'all, that caused a massive amount of bloodshed of our ancestors, y'all. Them that look like you and them that look like me, Miss Chandra. <laughs> a massive amount of bloodshed. You know what I'm saying? And we said in the case of this, the, this diaspora, y'all, this is no other, this is no other people but us as a majority. This is no other people but us as a majority. Because we know others going to get tied into it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, God. And we mainly talking about Judah, but the ten tribes. All indigenous people. <laughs> all indigenous people around the world, man. All the people that's suffering, all the people that's being downcast, all the people that, that Satan is giving hell to in the earth. Why are they, giving, why are they getting so much hell? 
Why are they getting so much kickback, Paulie? Because he hate their God. <laughs> he hate their God. That God used these people to bring forth into the earth. Not just for them, but for all people. For all races of men. For God had, all, God had made all races of men with one blood, the book of Acts say. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be many tongues, many languages in heaven worshiping together. Black, brown, blue, white, all colors, y'all. For God is no respect of person. Who, God? <laughs> he said all who would come. He said all who would come. This gospel is for every nation under heaven. He died for every single person, yo. Every single one of us. He spilt his own blood. That we might be reconciled to the Father. Who did it with his own blood? By his stripes we are healed. Who the chastisement that was supposed to be laid upon us was laid upon him, yo. A man of sorrow who carried the sins of the world, y'all. My sins and your sins. My lying and your lying. My stealing and your stealing. Oh, God, my sinning and your sinning. But he said, all that come to him. He said, come. He said, don't your sin be red as scarlet. I'm going to wash them as white as snow. As white as snow. He said, I'm able to forgive you, but not only just forgive you, but to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's the power he has. That's the power he has. He said, all I want you to do is believe upon me and I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to wash you. I'm going to make you new. I'm going to fill you with my spirit. I'm a kadash you in the Hebrew. I'm going to set you apart for my purpose. You know what I'm saying? But to keep on going, y'all, we talked about how, you know what I'm saying, the, the, that, 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 that this majority of people of us, this, this majority of us, y'all, who is no other than the descendants of the original children of Israel. We're talking about, y'all, the, 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 ooh, the, <laughs> we're talking about, Judah, I have in my notes. Just giving you a little background. Starting all the way back from 70 AD in Jerusalem, y'all. Them flooding into Africa. Showing you this diaspora, y'all, that took place in Africa. Dr. Rudolph Winsor, in his book From Babylon to Timbuktu, he said a million Hebrews, a million Jews fled into Africa. And I don't want to go too deep into it, but I told you we talked about it in Eba, and we're going to get to it, but I don't want to expound upon it. That word Eba, y'all, the, the Hebrew word derives from Eba. It derives from Eba. You know what I'm saying? And in the Bible, we see that Abraham was the first Hebrew. And Abraham had what? He had who? He had Isaac and who? Ishmael. Both Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Because if your father a Hebrew, Franklin, you a Hebrew. But the promised seed would go to who? Isaac. And then Isaac would have what? Jacob and who? Esau. Both Hebrews because Isaac is a Hebrew. But the promised seed would go not to Esau, but who? Jacob. He said, he said, Esau have I hated, but Jacob have I loved. Both Hebrews, but it's Jacob that would bring forth the 12 tribes of Israel. And what we told you is that those who are from Israel, those who are real Israelites are Hebrews, but not all Hebrews are Israel. <laughs> That's deep. That's deep. Go study that, man. So you could kill a lot of the confusions. 
And just talking about this di diaspora, y'all, we talk about that this God prophesied this thing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm moving. How much time I got, Shane? I got to finish this today. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to go quick, y'all. The prophecy of Balaam in Numbers, y'all. Balaam, and I'm going to paraphrase it. Balaam, y'all, prophesied that ships would come from Chittim. And these ships from Chittim would afflict Asher and shall afflict Eber. You know what I'm saying? Who would, who would later be the descendants of Israel. It would afflict Asher and it would afflict Eber. You know what I'm saying? And this, 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 these ships that came from the coast of Chittim, y'all, is no other than the diaspora. Balaam said, who going to be alive in this time? He looked out far. He said, this is so far in time. Who going to be alive? He said, I see ships that's going to come and afflict Eber. And Balaam was prophesying the modern day diaspora that your people experience. Being dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth. These same ships is mentioned in Deuteronomy and we're going to get into it because they take this prophecy of Balaam and they only conduce it to the prophecy in Daniel chapter 11 verse 13 going all the way to verse 30 with the abomination of desolation in the land of Israel during the time of the Hellenizers when they came from Chittim, y'all, and they afflict Eber. And that's true, Brother Franklin. But they leave out these other prophecies. <laughs> they leave out the prophecy that's in Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 20, 20 what it is? Deuteronomy 2868, talking about this same ship, Miss Chandra. The same ship that would come and afflict evil. He says, ships going to come and shall bring you into Egypt again with ships. Now, we know you don't need no ships to go to Egypt. We already know that. He talking about another Egypt. And that word Egypt, it means the house of bondage. It means slavery again, Miss Dawn. He wasn't just saying a particular Egypt, even though we know America fit the description. Just look on the back of your dollar. Just look at downtown D.C. It's all made like Egypt, obelisk, and every single thing. But he wasn't just talking about a, a land. Mom, he was talking about a house of bondage. A house of bondage. And we would be, we would be dispersed throughout the four corners of the earth and put in bondage, Miss Dawn. Something that happened to your people that never happened to any other people upon the earth. Ain't no other race of men was ever packed on ships and brought to different places and forced into slavery. It ain't happened. It ain't happened. There's only one people that fit that description. And God prophesied this thing thousands of years beforehand in the Bible. The prophetic word. This thing is not only for, for, for correction and reproof, but this Bible is a, is, a, is a history book that's accurate to the letter, accurate to the date. We believe the history writers of men, but we don't believe the history writers in the Bible. God know history whoo, without even thinking about it because all history is his story. <laughs> history is only his story, Miss Dawn. We play a part in his story. We are people that's worrying about our own lives. He said, isn't the, the clothes, isn't, isn't the life more than the clothes? He said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. We worrying about our own self when, when we only a part of his story. We worrying about our own story. When you just get a part of his story, you just understand his story. Get in line with his story. 
and he going to make your life a story. <laughs> he going to make it a story. He going to make it a story. We're trying to make our own stories. We out here trying to make our own stories. He said, I know the plans I have for you in Jeremiah 11, 29. Come on, man. He said, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. To give you a hope in a future, Nick. He want to give you a story. Being a part of his story. <laughs> he going to do it, Nick. Keep serving. Keep seeking it. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things going to be added. We got plans for you, Nick. Oh, we got plans for you, Nick. But this, they, they leave out Deuteronomy, y'all. They leave out Deuteronomy. You know? And to keep on going, that's where we want to be, y'all. And um, I got a few more, and we're going we gonna to break camp, man. We're going to shut it down, and then next Thursday, I'm going to be here, y'all. By the grace of the most high, I'm going to get with Paul and man. Uh, you know, I'm going to get with Pastor, man. We're going to try to make it work, man, because we got to get into this, 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 this word. We got to break this thing down. We got to get into prayer, y'all. Forgot to move in this house. Forgot to move in these last days. God going to do a work that if he would have told us, we wouldn't believe, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And as we study and understand this, y'all, these ancient people of the coast of Chittim and of Balaam. Give me a little minute, my brother. Paul, give me a little minute. I'm, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? You know, from the, the coast of Chittim, y'all, who Balaam prophesied about that would come with ships, y'all, and afflict Eba. And afflict evil, you know what I'm saying, in a far distant future, which is no other than the upper echelon of Edom, y'all, according to the book of Jasher. I'm going to flow through it, man. Y'all write this down. Go study this, please, man. Jasher chapter 90, verse 30 through 31. It talks about how Edom and Chittim, y'all, or Kittim, K-I-T-T-I-M, became one kingdom. In, the, in all days, y'all, in all the days, they became one kingdom. Meaning, y'all, I have in my notes that they became one kingdom in their day, but also continuing into all the days afterwards. <laughs> he said, Edom and Chittim, y'all, or Kittim, became one kingdom. One kingdom. You know what I'm saying? They became one kingdom. It also says in, in the B part of verse 31 that Edom and their government was with the children of Chittim and their king. Meaning that they not only became one as a people, y'all, but they became one as a political alignment, Paul A. <laughs> Continue. Throughout all the days afterwards, from that day, Paulie, they became not only one as a people, but one as a political alignment. We're talking about governments. We're talking about the upper echelon. We're talking about heads of state, y'all. We're talking about government who is run by the prince of the air, Paulie. Spiritual wickedness, huh, mom? You like to quote it in high places. Running and ruling over governments and head of states, y'all. They became one in this Chittim, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I have in my notes, they became one right there down, man, through, through Zepho, man. You know what I'm saying? Zepho was the first king or emperor of Rome, y'all. Read that in Jasher 61, verse 13. In verse 23, verse 24, I have in my notes. You know what I'm saying? Chittim, y'all. The, 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 the island of Cyprus. Chittim, y'all. The same place where Italy is. Chittim. 
the Grecians, the Greeks, y'all. Chittim, the Roman Empire, y'all. All the providence of Rome. That's who Chittim is. And they became one with Edom, the Edomites, with the people of Esau, the people that God hates. <laughs> they became as one people, y'all. This Chittim is also spoke about in 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 1. And we give shout out to our pastor, our bishop, man, Pastor Omar, who broke this thing down, y'all. Doing a study, y'all, extensive, breaking this thing down in a series that he did called The Roots of Rome. Broke this thing down, man, beautifully, man. Giving us understanding where we could go and search, Paul. It. We give honor to him for that long God to use him, man. But you got to go and study that yourself. This Chittim is no other, y'all, than the people of Satan himself. <laughs> this people of Rome. And Daniel prophesied about it in, nine, in chapter 9, verse 26. Daniel talked about the lowercase prince, y'all. The upper echelon of Edom. They became one people, one government. You know what I'm saying? And all the theologians agree I have in my notes. When you go and read the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26, they all believe that this lowercase prince is no other than Satan himself. And it says, I'm going to read you the scripture, man, and we're going, we going oh, God, man. You know what I'm saying? Daniel says, he said, after these, after three scores in two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. They would cut off the Messiah. They would kill the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? But not for himself. He wouldn't die for himself. He say, no man take it my life. But I lay my life down, Paul. He didn't have to die if he didn't want to, Miss Terry. They cut him off, but it was only by his omission. They cut him off, but it was only by his say so. They cut him off, but it was only for other people, Paul. <laughs> He allowed himself to be cut off for sinful people, for them who was lost in the world, without hope in the world. Satan had us in a, in a, in a rock, between a rock and a hard place, y'all. We couldn't move. He had us bound. He had us locked. But the Messiah would be cut off for us. He would be cut off for us, y'all. He would die. He would be bruised. He would be spit upon. He would be beaten, y'all, so deep that they say he wasn't even recognizable. Tearing his skin with the, with the cat of nine tails, y'all. 30, 30 what? 39 lashes upon his back. Removing all the meat from his back. Can you, can you understand the blood that was there? You see, we talk about the, 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 the crucifixion. We talk about this beating of, of, of Jesus like it was just nonchalant. But it was so horrifying. When you go back and study it, they say it was so bad they could have seen the flesh. They could have seen his bones, y'all. They drove nails, train track nails through his, his hands, y'all. They drove nails through his feet, Nick. They put a, a crown of thorns upon his head, and it was for our sins, Paulie. It was for our transgression. It was for our iniquity. He died for us, a brutal death, y'all. He hanged upon that cross. He died the death that we were supposed to die. And he looked out. He was cut off for us. Not for himself, but for others. And he said, all who are heavy and laden, he said, come to me and I'm going to give you rest. 
He said, I'm going to give you rest for your sick, sick soul. I'm going to change your situation if you just come to me. If you be real with me, stop playing. Be real with me. You see, we serve a real God, man. He said all he want us to do is confess our faults, confess that we done done wrong in his sight. The Bible said as none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all stand guilty before him, y'all. But he sent the Messiah to be cut off for us. And he said, all who come to me. He said, believe that I died for your sins. Believe that I was buried in the grave. Believe that I rose on the third day. He said, I'm going to give you rest for your souls. He made a claim that God made in the Old Testament to give his people rest. It's only God could give rest, y'all. You can't find rest without God. Your soul is going to continue to pant. It's going to continue to wander until it finds itself a resting place. And that resting place is only found in the Messiah. It's only found in Jesus the Christ. I'm trying to tell you something that I know, not that I heard. He changed my life forever, y'all. You out your plan. You out your thinking it's a game. You don't understand how real it is. You don't understand. He did it for you. He did it for your children. He did it for your friends. He did it for your family. Who you walk by every day. Who headed straight to hell in a handbasket. Maybe even yourself. Because the Bible say, what he say? He say, he say, who he say? He say, examine yourself lest you be in the faith, man. Are you really in the faith tonight? Are you really in the ark tonight? Are you really in Christos? Are you really in Christ tonight? If he had to come back today, we talking about the day of the Lord. Will, he, will, will you be judged? Or will you be justified will you be found guilty or will you be made innocent he made a way for us y'all all we gotta do is ask him all we gotta do is believe and he gonna do it he gonna save us and change our lives forever. And I'm going to just ask you to stand up. I ain't going to even ask you to come to the altar. Stand up if you done heard the word of the Lord. If you done spoke to your soul. That's good. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful. Keys, y'all. Ooh, gifts from the most high. Skill from the most high. Talent from the most high. Oh, Daddy, we invite you in. We ask you to come in. Come in. We know you stand at the door and knock, Master. We open the door unto you tonight. For we know you don't take it by force. You're not going to be violent, God. All you do is knock. It's for us to open the door. And you said when we open the door, you promise to come in and dine with us. Not only you, but the Father. Not only the Father, but the Holy Spirit. So, Daddy, we take you at your offer as you knock. We open the door unto you. And we believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. We believe in the way you cut the Messiah off was not for himself, but for us. We believe in the blood that was shed. We believe in the meat that was shown. We believe in this brutal death that he died. He came from heaven. He died the death of a sinner, y'all. He was righteous, holy, and undefiled. He did it for you. He did it for me. So I'm asking you to close your eyes and picture yourself before him. Because he did it for you. And he stand before you. 
with his hands open wide, showing you his scars, showing you his marks. See yourself before him. And he's asking you, do you believe? He's asking you, do you believe? He's asking you, do you believe that I did it for you? He said, all you got to do is call upon me. He said, all that called upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Not might, but I will save you. I am going to save you. I am going to make you whole. I am going to heal you. I am going to raise you up. I am going to make you a leader in the earth. I am going to use you. I am. He said, I am that I am. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. So repeat after me as we look into his scars. Say, Father, we thank you for cutting off the Messiah. Not for himself, but for me. We thank you for the brutal death that he died. Not for himself, but for me. We thank you for the nails. We thank you for the scars. We thank you for the blood that was poured out on our behalf, on my behalf. You did it for me. You did it for me. For I done lied. I done done wrong. I'm not perfect. But you did it for me. So, Lord, fill me up with your spirit. Make me new. Save me and cause me to walk in the fear and the ammunition of the Lord. Make me yours. Make me new. Make me righteous. Make me holy. Burn every single thing in me that don't look like you and I thank you I receive it I love you in Jesus name amen 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 thank y'all man thank y'all for the bless you people cause your face to shine upon them be gracious unto them God lift up your countenance upon them and bless them with shalom peace God Oh, daddy, love upon them, God. Let them call upon you. Let them dine in fellowship with you. Show them, God, that they ain't come out in here for this rain for nothing, God. You, it was a divine meeting between you and them, God. And daddy, you ready to move in their life. You ready to heal. You ready to use them. You ready to break the bondages of wickedness, God. We come against everything that's not of you. We bind every devil in hell, God. We rebuke him right now in the name of Jesus. For it's not I that rebuke you, Satan, but the Lord rebuke you. Loose the people of the Most High. Anything they're going with, we ask that you break and bind it. Provide for them, God. Make a way for them, God. Open doors for them, God. Do the miraculous, God. And we promise to look up and give you the glory for it. Oh, Daddy, let them never be the same. Oh, 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 Master, here as I call upon you. Here as I call upon you. Let them be able to tell God that it was never the same from this day. Let them be able to tell it to others, God. Even them that been saved, God. Let them be different from today, God. Let them go out, God, with a storm, with a heart to see change, God. To break the bonds of wickedness. To pick up. To pick up. To pick up. The works in the office that Jesus left in the earth. To pick up where he left off. And to allow him to continue his work in them. We thank you for it, Master. For it's precious. Who God is precious. How beautiful 
or the feet of them that preach the gospel. Show up, Master. We thank you for pushing back the floods and pushing back the rain to allow us to meet, God, in this little building. Who, God, make a mighty impact, Master. Even the musicians, God, use them in a way like never before, God. Daddy, I'm asking you to, to move in their lives in a way like never before, God. You're using their gifts. You're using their talents, God. Make them, God. Whoo, make them something different in the earth, God. I'm asking you, God, to bless their families, bless their children, God. I'm asking you to move in their lives, God. You know what they want, God. You know what they lack, God. I'm asking you, King. Today, God, not tomorrow, do it for them. Meet them where they are in their secret hearts, O King. Show up and show out. Provide for them abundantly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank y'all, Dallas. Thank y'all, Dallas. In Jesus' name. We're going to be back. God spare Thursday, man. And uh, we're going to cut it short. We're going to get into this priestly office. We're going to get into this clarion call of the priestess, y'all. Jesus' name.